Hello, I'm Hayley. Apologies for that fan sound. It's like hot as balls in here. It's the 1st of January. I really want to start my second part of my childhood read. Started this one last night at about, I want to say just after 12 because I couldn't sleep. I'm reading R.L. Stein's Give Yourself Goosebump. The one where you like flick between and you have like four different stories all together in one. And this one is number three, Trapped in Batwing Hall. And this is like the, my first fan fiction. I literally wrote myself into this story. I specifically remember reading about the Pharaoh and the mummy situation. And I wrote about how I went upstairs into the mummy's tomb and like basically died. That was my fan fiction of this. So last night I opened up my book and I was just kind of like scribbling down the paths that I took. Two pages here of me with my little notes. I put sticky tabs on the pages so I would go uh, 29 or 68 and I would put a tab on both and then follow one so I would go back. I went back and followed all of the like first half so the very first few pages are just connected and then you pick between the blue team red team situation and I chose I think I chose blue team 88 or 33 and I chose 88 to begin with so I followed all of the 88 eight paths and I went back and forth between it's good you get to a point where like you know you're stuck on the stairs and then you die <laughs> you have the kids turn into monsters and you have to try and find like the mummy's bandage the witch's broom the werewolf's hair and like a human hand so you have to like go on sort of a treasure hunt and like there's scenes where you like you find you meet like a pharaoh and they threaten to take your brains out and mummify you alive which is terrifying there's one scene where like one of the girls is like i can help you but then she like tricks you and then like you die in the next scene and then in one scene you don't i did end up completing doing team b i did come to the end it's like the end you finish and then i read one passage that you like wake up as if it never happened and it, you start all over again. I don't know, it's pretty fun, eh? Like, I'm having a great time. Last night, it took me like, I was like half an hour being like frantically like, oh my God, dude, it just brought me back to like childhood nostalgia. I'm so excited to continue this. So I'm now going to go back to pages like 33, the blue team. And I think this one's the one where you go into, you become a bat and like go into a crypt. And like the graveyard scene, I remember that one specifically. The graveyard one, I think I also wrote a fan fiction about being in a graveyard and having to get like a key or something out of a crypt. Like I remember literally this book struck my fan fiction writing days. I just got back from my parents' house. Um, I've spent the day over at mum's, so I've already finished one book and now I'm just gonna start another. I just sent a photo of these asking mum to pick which one and she picked The Dead End, which was my favorite as a child. So that's what I'm going to start reading now. This one is about a girl whose parents decide for the summer they're gonna go live in a small town. I ripped a page out, I don't know why. Hello, I am back. The description of the house is very like minimal, but little things like talking about the fern wallpaper and like the wood detailing the fact that there's like particular types of shutters, it's like, it gives you like just enough to know it's a really old house that needs to be fixed up. That it's without having to go into like ridiculous detail about the house. There, like, I love a good spooky setting, so obviously as a kid I was like fiending for that. So I picked this one up and reread it that many times. I bought from the Scholastic like book fair catalogs that my school got. We had like a little catalog thing with like multiple different options and we would tick off the back of what one we wanted and then we would send off some money. So we would get our item in like a kind of like a lunch order type thing. It's hard to explain if you haven't experienced it, but it was one of the most exciting times for me. We got like a lot of spy gear, so I had like quite a few books with like spy gear attached to it Like I had the invisible ink pen and I spent wasted so many money on that But not a waste because I reread this one in particular over and over again It came with a little poison apple like necklace that I also would wear all the time <sighs> This book's a lot This book definitely gave me like three separate nightmares growing up I had like a little break and then I came back and it's just like, it's a lot. So I'll give you the first, like first off give you like 
you know, rundown of what the story's about and stuff. And then I'll go into a little bit more spoilery stuff. So I don't think a lot of people are gonna like go out and read this, you know? So obviously I've already mentioned about how it's about a girl going for summer, going to the middle of fucking nowhere. Gets to this house, some haunted shit starts happening and she's like, this is a bit suspicious. She finds a journal, like diary, um, written by this previous girl who used to live there. There's like little bits and pieces of disposition that like, sets up what's going to happen and why things are happening so like you can definitely like get the vibes that like something's going to happen and then it may be important like definitely as a kid like you'd be like oh that looks suspicious and be able to like piece things together as an adult i knew what was going to happen straight away three separate nightmares this book gave me as a kid fuck me she meets this guy and they become friends um and she is like reading this journal and Things in her life, like spooky stuff that's happening in the house, but things in the journal are starting to sort of correlate with some of the things that are happening in her life. Now I'm gonna get to the spoilery section. Casey is starting to have dreams. She starts hearing like tapping up in the attic and she starts hearing banging. And she starts dreaming about going to a party and like playing hide and seek. And it's really fucking weird. And then she starts reading this journal and she's had the girl in the journal, Millie, I think her name is, she starts having dreams about being stuck in a fire. And Millie is like very switched on that she has this sort of intuition and can kind of predict as to what's going to happen. And as all these little things are happening in real time to Casey, things that Millie wrote about in her journal are like kind of happening. And I forgot that this happened in the book because I had nightmares about being stuck in a trunk. Like, that was something that I had nightmares about. I completely forgot about the fact that this girl, Millie, she dies in a trunk because she plays hide and seek and gets, like, stuck in there. I didn't know she died. I thought, like, that, I forgot about that completely. So here I am, like, no wonder I'm having nightmares about being claustrophobic and stuck in a trunk and like dying that way because this bitch died that way in this book. The main character Casey's having dreams about being stuck in this thing because Millie died that way. And then in the opposite end, Millie's having dreams about being in a fire because that's how this book ends. There is a fire that happens and they are like, oh, the flickering of lights is how you could tell. And these lights have been flickering in their house and she's always just tossed it down to being supernatural because... But in reality, like, this whole time, the reason things have been falling and breaking is because the Millie's trying to warn them, being like, this is going to happen, get out of this house. And then, like, a huge-ass fucking fire happens. I have had dreams about being stuck on a second-story building in a fire and having to jump out the window to get out. That's what happens in this. <laughs> No wonder I had nightmares about this. I personally really enjoyed this. No wonder, th like honestly, no wonder this was one of my favorites as a kid. Like I can genuinely understand why. This like bit that I've ripped out and like cut out is a little sneak peek to the next book. This is the order that I bought them in. So I might just read them in the order I bought them in. So I had, this one was the first one. This one was the one that was my favorite and I read it the most. This one was my second one, which is what this one has that little like preview in the back for. This one is This Totally Bites and this is a vampire theme. And then the last book that I read at that time that I don't remember is Misfortune, which is a witch one. Okay, it's today, uh, January the 3rd. Wooji is having his comeback today, so I'm excited for that. Um, anyway, <laughs> I am starting This Totally Bites. I don't really remember anything about it other than I think our main character on the front cover here thinks she becomes a vampire. Emma Rose Paley, her aunt is coming from Romania. Okay, it's very obvious that the, they're setting up the main character to be like completely different to her parents, just in her appearance and the way that she behaves. I believe her mother, yeah, works at a American Museum of Na Natural History and she put, she's got a creature of the night exhibit going on. Uh, they host cool exhibits of things like butterflies and sea monsters, which fucking, that's cool as shit. I wish I had that job. Could you imagine? So I'm getting the impression just from the first, literally from like the first few pages, we know that her aunt is gonna come from Romania. And I think her aunt is bringing stuff for Creature of the Night exhibition that her mom's putting on. And I think that's where we start to find out that she herself What's her name? Emma Rose. 
she must be a vampire because she comes from like a family of vampires, you know? And I think that's what's gonna happen. That's my prediction. Our main character has a dog named Bram, like Bram Stoker, haha. <laughs> Um, and the dog hates her. Her friend is vegetarian and she keeps shitting on her friend. Like, not like aggressively shitting, but like slightly. So they're talking about how she has like a burger addiction and she's like hoeing into this burger and her friend's like, I don't know how you eat that stuff, you know? Just cause like, honestly, it probably would be kind of gross. The way she's describing how she's eating it, I'm like, that does sound gross. But then she's like, my BFF can be a bit annoying when she starts gushing about the wonders of bean sprouts. And it just occurred to me that this probably was my first introduction to vegetarian and veganism. The way this lady's talking doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> I think I'm more interested in the museum section of this part where she's talking about like her mum putting it together. Because I remember that was something that was interesting to me. But I also, I do remember like not liking the school scenes, so I don't think that this is going to be one of my favorites because I think school setting is boring as fuck. I'm like past that. I'm a dummy. <laughs> I finished this either on the third or the fourth and I completely forgot that I was filming so I didn't even tell you guys how I feel about this. This book is about this Sheila here, Emma Rose Paley. She witnesses her aunt transform into a bat and starts doing research and finds out that she is from a lineage of Romanian vampires. She thinks that she's gonna be a vampire, so she starts doing all this like research. She ends up getting into a big fight with her friend because her friend is honestly just being like, hey, you're changing, you're being weird, you're not a <laughs> like basically like calling her out, being like, hey, you're not a vampire, sweetie, like get out, get out of your head. And then a guy who's been in her class for like years, obviously, has always called her pale paley in like a teasing way basically bullying <laughs> and they somehow managed to switch it and have him be the only person who actually listens to her when she's talking about this vampire stuff and he ends up being really nice about it and stop he asked when she says don't call me that he stops calling her it and it's supposed to be like a oh this guy who's been kind of like teasing you for your entire school life was doing it jokingly like he's actually a really nice guy you know it's fine i don't know I don't really like the whole boys bully you because they like you thing that they tried to justify. I understand where her friend's coming from because she was sounding a bit insane and she was changing her behaviours. I liked the ending but during it I didn't really care too much. If I were to say this one or the dead end, I would say the dead end. These two were the ones who I remembered the most. This next book, now that it's the seventh, I'm gonna finish this today because I've been putting it off reading it for like freaking three days. All I remember is they go and to a carnival and they get their fortune told. That's all I know. So we're gonna dive into this. I started it yesterday and they're at the carnival and then I stopped. I think I got a chapter in and then I stopped reading. Honestly, it just makes me miss my like town's carnival. We've missed it for two years in a row now. This lighting is really bad, sorry. I just finished misfortune these two ladies are the main characters so we have zoe who's this girl and we have mia who's this lady here mia is really nice and kind and she gets this like great fortune told by the, the fortune teller at the carnival and um zoe on the other hand is a right old cow and gets cursed <laughs> because she's rude mia not mia but Zoe gets cursed and a bunch of shit happens to her. Like she gets into an accident and falls off her bike. She drops a, a freaking hammer on her toe. She almost gets hit by a car. Her emails get hacked and she ends up telling the guy she likes to fuck off. And she, her phone keeps calling the guy over and over again. Like she's some weird stalker who like just won't stop calling him. Like little, little, lots of little things that like would piss anyone off happens to her in the span of like three days. I believe this book is like, just like three days. And then like the end is kind of, you know, it's like set during summer. So it's not a school setting. It's just them 
chilling out, living life, having sleepovers every fucking night. I could not handle seeing my friend this much. This chick gets cursed. They have to try and figure out how to break the curse. Um, just lots of little inconvenient things happen to her. It's not very memorable. This is like the lowest on the tier out of the three other books that I've read now. So out of the three Poison Apple books, this one's the lowest. Oh, here I am, editing Haley, coming here to tell you that this video is finished. <laughs> I forgot to end it, so um, I ended up reading four books, three of them being poison apple books, one of them being a goosebumps. Cool. Wow. Fun. If you stayed it to the end of this video here, like, let me know in the comments, you know? I want to know what you guys are like. I'm so tired. I'm waiting for my um, load of washing to finish so I can hang them up. Thank you for watching. See you next week, I guess. Bye-bye. Mm,